Um, <coughs> I always wonder sometimes how I end up on this side of the table because clearly I'm the least qualified. I have absolutely no authority to decide anything, nor am I as engaged as many of you in these kind of issues. But you so were the most provocative yesterday. Yeah, so right. <laughs> but <laughs> the energy level is a bit down <laughs> even on my end. But <laughs> I, I, I would like just to make three quick observations and maybe three ways of how we think uh, uh, forward. And this is just coming out of five minutes of scribbling down something. Coming here, uh, quite frankly, I expected a lot of conversation, a lot of talks about systems. And uh, instead what I encountered, and this is really a surprise to me, is that we talked a lot about individuals, about actors. And uh, think about it. We talked about recruitment, <coughs> about rising stars. We talked about generally leadership. We talked about capabilities and HR systems. We talked about learning processes and behavioral indicators. And maybe from my end, we also talked about coalitions, broader mm -hmm. social collective action. Now, this is really surprising for me. It shouldn't be surprising when we talk about real budgeting because that's messy, that's done by actors, but it is surprising a little bit. I should say, however, one thing, and I think this is important to notice at this stage, is that I think we are gradually moving away from this notion of a single individual, the reformer, uh, who can change things. Instead, I think what we are moving into is an understanding that even that single individual needs to be embedded in a broader collaborative governance framework. He needs or she needs to inspire a variety of actors to work together. Similarly, we understand that there are coalitions of elites who form interests and coalitions that will challenge them. So a lot of the outcomes we see are actually contested outcomes among these groups. Second observation. I think in this uh, setting over the last two days, we talked a lot about learning. And that again was kind of surprising. We talked from a donor perspective about our failures to learn, about the lack of feedback loops. From the recipient country perspective, we talked about dynamic capabilities, iterative learning, uh, problem-driven, and so on and so forth. And I think this, and I I'm not going to bore you with this, again relates to questions of how we study these kind of phenomena, how we become better in understanding what is going on. And I think I liked it that Matt actually was pointing to an issue that we often don't do. We, we are quite good in beating ourselves up, but you know, looking at successes, and you know, I was reminded of Judith Tendler's book, which changed my life somewhat, uh, Good Government in the Tropics, where she started looking at what makes success in the least likely circumstances, you know, northern Brazil and so on. And I think there's a lot of stories we could learn, and I'm talking as a, someone living in Australia and looking at the Pacific, which always dazzles us. Third observation, a bit more critical, you know that I like to do that, is I sometimes wonder, even after these two days, if we are getting a little bit too comfortable. I expected more disagreement, I expected more fighting over certain issues, and I certainly have tried to do my best. Mm -hmm. But in many ways, we all seem to agree. Yes, the politics matters. Yes, uh, you know, it's important to take into consideration complexity. But what I, I think we still have on our plate is a number of really important questions where, quite frankly, we have absolutely no answer to. <coughs> We still don't know what <coughs> politics actually means for different types of interventions. I think we still don't understand how we make hybridity work for us. I think we still don't understand under what conditions actors decide that institutions should perform and be adhered to and be enforced. So a lot of open questions where, quite frankly, I'm not sure how much we have actually uh, moved forward in these last 48 hours. So then the way forward for me, what I take away from this is that I think we need to be willing and more engaging in taking risk. We need to give more space to experimentation. We need to give more space to competition. And I think this will mean for us a very different role in the future. So we have to become move away from the untrusted advisor to the trusted advisor. And I think this means for us as donors, as outsiders, a very different role. The second point is I think we need to think harder, and this goes back to Matt actually, about what this learning hype and paradigm now means. I think uh, at the level of the development countries, I think I would just say it needs stability. If, th if people are changing all the time, there will be little learning taking place. It needs a reflection on cultures. And most important, it needs a reflection on what demand pressures actually can contribute to that kind of uh, process. And then that leads me to the last point to make, which is a very personal point. I think we have to accept that whatever we do in the future will remain messy. It will remain contested. And I think it's time for us to acknowledge that there is an important demand side component to all of what we are doing here, and that contestation is an <coughs> integral part of how informal and formal norms uh, change. And the last uh, thing I just want to say on this coalition's demand side argument is 
a bit of a, a grain of salt here, you know. Uh, I, uh, you know that I work a lot on the Philippines, you know, and recently we see a lot of change in PFM in the Philippines. A lot of it is driven by middle class taxpayer coalitions. But quite frankly, when I look at the middle class in the Philippines and I look at what they want, I cannot say to you honestly that they want necessarily pro-poor policy. So the, 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 the coalitions we sometimes have in mind as the drivers of change, particularly in the Asian setting, are deeply problematic coalitions to start with. And that has also implications for us, how we actually widen that kind of coalition. So let me leave it on, on, on this not so happy note and hand over to uh, Nicola. Thank you.